Unpacking and Moving a 33-Pound Anyang Power Hammer, William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also a new business book, Create Your Own Job Security, which advocates starting a new business anytime, anywhere, at any age when you need to earn a little extra money. And my late life business is Hovey's Knives of China. And this large hammer is going into my knife shop. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And as much as we guys like our guy toys, and seemingly to our spouses, need almost no excuse at all to buy a new, another piece of equipment of some sort, sometimes it pays to rent rather than to either buy or build. And that's the case here. Tomorrow, sometimes, or the day after, I'm going to be moving a power hammer into my knife shop. And this hammer weighs something on the order of 1,350 pounds, a little more with the packing and so on. And so by myself, I have to get it inside this porch and also inside a 36 inch door frame over here. Well, my first challenge is getting it on the porch. To get to the porch, there is a four inch lift. So I have a dolly, which you'll see in a little bit, already built, and I'm going to put some ramps on that lift. So I'll have a low angle pull through the door. But I need a dead man. And what a dead man is, if you don't know, is something buried in the ground typically that you use as a staunchion to pull something else against. And my dead man is going to be a steel eye set in this four inches of concrete floor. And to do that, I'm going to have to drill a hole. So, we have gone by a friendly local hardware store and we have a hole drawer. <laughs> yep. In short, a concrete drill. And I'm going to drill just one or maybe two holes. So I certainly don't need to buy this rather expensive piece of equipment, which you knew would be several hundred dollars at least. So uh, we just rented it for half a day. So, okay, we're going to get started. I'm going to put the second hole underneath my shop table and this will allow a straight line pull through my shop door. Fortunately the machine is small enough that I can actually get under the table with it. That allows me a good clean hole. The formidable looking box on the trailer there is my power hammer. And as you see, I have it on the trailer in my yard, successfully brought down from Macon yesterday. I went and picked it up at the warehouse. Fortunately, the warehouseman had some equipment, so he was able to successfully put it on the trailer and lit me a couple of tie down straps here and we slowly crept our way uh, the 70 odd miles from the warehouse to my home here in central Georgia. I have several challenges today. One of which is to move it inside my car shelter there so I can get the wood off it and actually see the sides of the instrument and proceed to move it first inside the porch, and then secondly inside the shop. I am probably the world's worst trailer backer, and the dent on one side of my shed there uh, demonstrates that. So we're going to see if we can do better this time and get it as far into there as we can. 
I actually have a fused vertebrae in my neck, so I can't turn my head very well. Hence, I can't back. So, uh, I gave up after three tries and decided to use another method. We have things here ready to travel. The little carabiner I'm going to use and that rope is only going to take a few hundred pounds of pressure. But that should be enough to swing the trailer around. If not, then we'll actually get the truck winch and do it that way. That pull was successful in getting it somewhat straightened up and pointed uh, at a better angle toward the porch. But I still need to get it centered up and onto the porch itself. So we'll do another pull with the tractor but in the opposite direction. succeeded. Our little dolly got caught up on the edge there, but we now have our hammer centered to the door and the trailer under the shed. So now at least I can take it off as well as remove all that wood, etc., etc., in the shade rather than in the 100 degree heat and the bright sunshine. As will be seen later, I should have attached the dolly to the trailer to keep it from shifting. I have the power hammer on the trailer and in the center under my car shed. Now I just jacked up the back of the trailer and I took the lift gate off because the amount of pressure I'm going to put on, or would have put on that gate had I attempted to use it, uh, would probably have broken those welds. You'll notice that I have my six-wheel dolly underneath the back and that way I hope to be able to pull the power hammer directly on the top of the dolly without having to lift it. So the next task is going to be to take the wood off of it and see actually what we've got and how, is, and how it is attached to that steel pallet. There were about 40 odd screws holding that thin plywood to that steel frame and I removed them with a small ratchet set. Now it would have gone much faster had I used a power tool but I just didn't happen to have one available. We now have the wood off the ends of the power hammer and we can see what we're doing. Uh, the power hammer is bolted down into that steel pallet and also surrounded by a steel cage which forms the backbone of the shipping crate. So I'm going to have to get that cage off it. Uh, underneath my shelter here, I don't have enough room to lift it straight off. The protective packing cage is now removed from the base and tilted forward toward you. That's why things look so strange. It's resting on the top of the machine and in particular the part it's resting on is massive cast iron. So it hitting something up there is just cast iron and machine bolts and nuts. So that's not really going to be terribly significant. Here under my shed I have some tie points on these cross braces. So what I'm going to do is lift that cage and move it forward and pull it off forward. Ask any knife maker and he'll probably tell you that the angle grinder is one of his favorite tools. And indeed it is. Yeah, no, no. 
this time. And that's far faster than getting out a cutting torch and doing it that way, I assure you. Plus, we don't get spatter and hot stuff all over our machine. Now that the angle grinder has done its work, the cage can come off the machine. We're getting ready to actually move the power hammer off of this steel pallet. And the first thing to do, of course, is that it was retained by four bolts, and those happen to be 15 sixteenths. Once we take off these bolts, we'll be able to slide the hammer itself off of the steel pallet. We have everything hooked up now on the pull. We have our rope. And it's attached, of course, to the hammer on this end. On the other end, going through the door, we have our deadbolt on the inside, which you saw me set first thing. A chain attached to that. And the winch cable from the truck attached to that. When we start pulling on the winch back there, things here should start moving. We've applied tension and everything is looking as it should. So now we'll see if we can actually get some movement somewhere. Yes, it and the pallet are sliding together. Okay, I need to restrain the pallet now to move it off the pallet, so I'll need to go and get a another restraint here. I'm now restraining the pallet with a couple of come-alongs and we'll see if we can get it moving actually off the pallet itself now. After our mishap, we're going to see if we can at least get it erect again. Now note when I relax the tension that the hammer wants to fall forward even though one would think the other way around, that it would settle down on its base. But this thing is extremely top heavy and extremely unstable. Although at some cost to my equipment, I did manage to erect the hammer. So keep watching for further developments if I work towards getting it in the shop. Besides backyard deer hunting, I have other outdoor books. And these include crossbow hunting, extreme muzzleloading, and e-book series on muzzleloading guns. Now my newest book is Create Your Own Job Security. And this book advocates that a person start a new business anytime, anywhere, at any age when you need a little extra money. This can be a large-scale business or a small-scale business, and you tailor it to your immediate needs and desires. Now, for me, it was a knife business, and hence the power hammer and why I'm moving it in my shop. And these are the unique knives that I make. These are culinary knives based on ancient Chinese patterns from 3,000 years ago. My work in progress is a novel, Father of the Grooms. And this is a dark comedy, and it traces the adventures of a Sicilian family who lives in Louisiana.
And they go to Sicily and they attempt to get brides for their two sons who are having difficulty in getting and staying married. So they're going to go back to the old country and do it the old-fashioned way. Well, things get very complicated in Sicily. And uh, that leads to quite a few adventures. So uh, this is the thrust of the novel. Uh, it will be completed in a year. Uh, right now, you can receive it chapter by chapter as I write it. And uh, for $20, you'll get the finished book as I complete it. To find out how I got the power hammer on the dolly and into my shop, see the next video. And Yang Power Hammer from Dr. Shop. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 750 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For information on my business books, you can go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To find out how my new novel and the knife I'm making for it are going, you can look at fatherofthegrooms.net. For information on my knives themselves, you can go to Hovey's Knives of China blog.co. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.